Hello, everyone. This is your host, Rebecca Jeffries for The Caretakers, the podcast that introduces you to people who make the world a better place. Today's guest is Becca Hyde. She is an advocate for mental health and destigmatizing people's opinions about mental health. Welcome, Becca. So glad you could be here. Thank you. I'm glad I can be here as well. Yeah, I'm delighted. Um, a couple of uh, details about Becca that made me interested in her. She is the uh, part of, the, she's the family services coordinator for Warrior Now. And she started a group on Facebook called Mill Spouseology. And both groups are in place for supporting families that are in the military. But Becca herself has a personal attachment to the mental health situation for people. So tell us a little bit about your story, Becca, and what inspired you to do this work. Okay, so uh, my husband joined the military straight out of high school. We were high school sweethearts. Um, and it was absolutely a different lifestyle than anything I had ever imagined. I, I didn't have family that was in the military, so I really didn't know what to expect. Mm. Um, he was deployed a lot, and I ended up, um, I got diagnosed with depression um, right after my son was born. I kind of, I dealt with it. it. It just kept getting worse and worse. Um, I dealt with it for, gosh, I guess 11 or 12 years kind of by myself because I was embarrassed. Um, I didn't want people to know what was going on. You know, I had to be strong. I couldn't, I, I was afraid I would appear weak and I couldn't do that with my husband being on active duty and being deployed all the time. He had to know that I had, I was holding down the fort. He had to know that. So I kept everything to myself. Um, my mother passed away in 2009 unexpectedly and we were stationed in Hawaii and that kind of, it kind of threw me into a spiral. Um, depression got really bad, really, really bad. And my husband knew that, that I wasn't well, but you know, he had a mission. He had to go out and deploy and he had to do what he had to do. He was there when he could be, you know, he's always there for emotional support, but still, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't willing to really reach out and, and get the help that I truly needed because again, you know, I was worried about his career and, and what, you know, the military might think. So in 2017, we moved, um, we had moved back to Tennessee. My husband was stationed in Millington and I just, I had a mental break. I couldn't take it anymore. Um, I had started working full time, you know, kids, all, you know, all the, all the normal that everybody else has, but I noticed that things were not right with me. It was no longer just depression. It was, it was more than I could handle. Mm -hmm. um, I thought I was going out of my mind. I, I finally went to a psychiatrist and, and I just laid it all out there. I remember I was sobbing and I told him, I said, I'm not me. Something is wrong. Mm -hmm. I think I need to be admitted. I, something is not right. I feel like I'm right. losing my mind. I really think I'm going crazy. Yeah. We, it was a two hour com consultation with the psychiatrist and we met a couple of times a month after that. And finally I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, um, which based on my history and, and in talking with him, he is, was fairly convinced that that is what I have had the entire time and had just been misdiagnosed. Mm. Um, Finally, after getting on the, the correct medication and, and getting some therapy that was much needed and doing lots and lots of research on bipolar disorder, um, I kind of accepted it, but it took a minute. It took me a good two years to really be able to accept the diagnosis and grasp it because, again, I was embarrassed. Right. Um, the stigma is very real. You know, if you tell someone you have bipolar disorder, they look at you like you have four heads. Right. Um, and, and it's, it's simply, it's, um, miseducation, you know, it, it's people that, that don't understand the mental illness. They don't understand what it's like to have bipolar disorder right. and they, they kind of clump all mental illnesses together and they right. think, oh, you know, they have bipolar, they must have split personalities or multiple right. personalities. And that's right. so not what it is. Yes. Um, so finally, after I grasped everything and realized that I must not be the only one that suffers from mental illness, that there are probably many other people, including many, many military spouses that suffer from the same thing, whether it be depression, bipolar disorder, PTSD. I mean, there's, there's 
different different things out there and I felt like if I could share my story and encourage others to come forward and and if nothing else seek help you know get what you need or talk to others about it be open with your family about your needs and what's going on in your head because they can't help what they don't know right um then you know I started sharing my story and hopefully it's it's encouraging others to get help and and to reach out and do what they need to do for, yeah. for their own self preservation I think that's such important work for everyone to to change their attitude about mental health and yes. to embrace the fact that it's it's treatable it, mm-hmm. it's treatable and more people suffer from it than we know absolutely so there is that quiet suffering that's always there and um it's having seen it in my, in my own family people suffering quietly because they were embarrassed to say they went to a therapist or embarrassed to get help or you know that that's it's so painful to watch that so I think it's hard as a family member because you watch it, but you feel helpless because you don't know how to help. And right. mental illness is is hard because it's invisible. Right. And you feel invisible sometimes. You feel like you have this, but nobody sees it. And and for me, I thought, well, maybe it really doesn't exist. Nobody else can right. see this. So maybe, maybe I am crazy. Maybe I'm the only one that's like this and it's just my head, you know? Mm-hmm. So it took a lot of therapy for me to be able to come to terms with it. Um, yeah. And I think that's important for family members to really understand is when your family member does things, uh, you know, whether it be lash out in anger or they say things that they really shouldn't say or they don't do things they should do, Sometimes they just withdraw. Right. You have to understand it's not the family member, it's the illness. Um, right. And the best thing families can do is educate themselves on the mental illness and just be there to support them. You know, let them know that no matter what they're going through, they're there for them. Right. Um, but it's hard as a caregiver as well. You know, you know, having, like you said, seen it within your own family, mm-hmm. it's important for the caregiver to get help as well. Right. Um because they can't help the loved one if they, you know, don't understand or if they're overwhelmed. So it's kind of a, it's a community effort is what I like to call it. You know, yeah, it kind of takes everybody. So it's so true. And I think the more people who get the information and embrace the person who's struggling, the the more ex- wider acceptance there will be of this because the fact, like you said, the fact that it's invisible is so hard. And I think women in particular have been deserved because we're often brushed off as, well, it's just in your head, mm-hmm. right? And then if we go back further, like even to World War II, poor soldiers coming home with PTSD and they're told, don't even talk about it. Just mm-hmm. you know, brush it under the carpet and forget it ever happened and you'll be fine. Well, that's, that's not healthy. <laughs> It's not, it's not. And I really feel like if there were a better support network, if there was better support within the military community in educating families on PTSD and the things that some of these um, service members go through, I think the divorce rate would be much lower in the military. I really do. I feel like the family structure would be stronger. Um, And education is key. Advocacy and education is where it's at and there's just not enough education out there about mental health there's just not right it's really a it's kind of hit and miss and even if you get and even some of the information you get may not be accurate you know i've read so many crazy things on the websites i'm just like that is so not what (laughs) it even is um but yeah and and that's one of the reasons i do what i do and and i speak with people like you you know uh it's to get it out there to get some of that that education out there and the advocacy and, and have other people step up and you don't have to have a mental health issue to advocate for better mental health or education for mental health. You know, I think mental health issues touch everyone at some point, whether it's a friend, a family member, everybody is struggling with something that you may not even know about. You know, we don't know what everybody's struggles are. So, Mm -hmm. um, just be there and advocate. That's the best thing you can do and, and learn about it. How can people reach you, Becca, so they can learn more? Um, well, I'm on Facebook. Um, everybody, you can friend me. You can follow me. Um, I am 
on LinkedIn under Rebecca Hyde. You can follow me there. I do. I post a lot about mental health resources on there. Right. Um, email. I'll give you my email address and you can put it out there for people. And, and I'm willing to give anybody any kind of information they need about mental health. If you need resources, if you need support, you know, I'll, I'll point you in the right direction. Um, I, I, I will talk to anyone, you know, if, if I get 10,000 emails, it may take me a minute to get through them, but I will absolutely reach back out to you and, and help you the best way that I can. You are a mental health angel. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for so much for being on the caretakers today, Becca. It's been delightful getting to know you and we really want to support your mission and be a part of making this positive change. Thanks thank for you so much.